Okay. So, we'd like to welcome everybody to this Sunday's Household Talk. Um, we'd like to welcome uh, especially our uh, brothers and sisters on Zoom. Um, we'd like to also welcome our brothers and sisters all over the world. Uh, a special welcome to those that listen to us in the Central Republic, um, in the US, as well as in the UK, South Africa. We have brothers and sisters there that sit in and listen to, to these household talks. So I'd like to urge you to sit back, relax, as we get the word of God uh, being brought to us by the man of God. And um, we know that these, these words have been impacting and changing our lives every day. Uh, personally, my life has never been the same. I, I, I have seen the impact of these household talks and what they're able to do in your life. So I urge you to sit back as we have Rev come over and uh, lead us into today's um, household talk. All right, thank you for that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. As usual, you are free <clears throat> to invite another person. In fact, we, I always urge people to, to share the link. After you log in, you share, share with someone so that we have everyone here so that we we don't miss, don't miss out on the word of God. I want to appreciate my, my co-host, Mam Lumbuka, who just introduced us. Thank you very much. I want to appreciate uh, Moape for making it possible for the platforms, for Zoom. I want to appreciate all of you for being here. So please relax, like Mam Lumbuka mentioned. Let's have a good time. We're going to take our time. We need to talk about our lives, things impacting us. You notice, like I always say, the, the world is changing and it's not changing for any better. Things are getting bad to, from bad to worse. People are just not in the right, right way, right mind. Even in our country where we are, things have been happening which are so unbelievable. But we need to hold on as people who, who, are, who are holding the they can the, the the candle to the torch of truth. We follow truth, our lives will be good. Otherwise, the world is messed up because six thousand year period has come to its fulfillment, and this fulfillment of sin is total. Uh, these words I'm speaking to all of us because we are all affected. But uh, God has blessed us with the household, the household talk the Son of Man, to help us, to guide us. Today I want especially to bring out the ways, bring out how that the only hope for, for humanity is truth and also the only hope for the things, for the deterioration of humankind, deterioration of youth, children. Youth are doing things which we cannot believe. So. I thought today I would discuss about uh, marriage, about home, how that the institution of home is still a valid institution in our society. If we do away with it, we will end up in trouble, just like we have ended up in trouble. We are aware as uh, the human family on this earth that family has deteriorated, family has, has gone down, it, it is rotten, family stinks. Family is not functional anymore. We are producing children who are wrong. But, of course, we need to, to build this right back. We begin from the... Maybe we need to try to restore the dignity of marriage. That's what I, I'm thinking. And uh, I, want to, to, I want to talk to that effect today. Please just relax, feel free, and uh, let's have a good time. Welcome someone, invite someone, so that we go on and have this sermon. So please, I'm waiting on you to share with someone. That would be very good if you shared with someone. Share, share, share. These are very important sermons, very important messages. 
So I, I would love to do that. So maybe we are ready, others will join us. So we want to, to, to talk on the restoration of the dignity of marriage and other things. I'm hoping this message will get to, um, to the human family, to everyone, and it might help. It might help you restore the dignity in our youth, dignity in our women, in our men, in, in humanity. Otherwise, humanity is deteriorating. Every, every day we're living in fear, both from the pandemic and the morals, the human morals. But uh, we need to restore one thing that can help us, the dignity of marriage. Last week, I mentioned that marriage is inevitable. Marriage is what God wants us to, to, to be, how, how God wants us to live. But of course, when we discuss these issues, we need to, to now try and uh, amplify and see where we've gone wrong. It seems like uh, the sacrament, you know, sacrament is a formal religious ceremony conferring a specific grace on those who receive it. So it seems like um, the sacrament of the Christian faith have rather been neglected. The sacrament of truth, the values we were brought up upon. We've, we as human beings or other people, we are this, this faith, religious faith. So it seems like the sacrament of the Religious faith in every human being have rather been neglected. The marriage sacrament is one of the basic rituals in the entire world. This one, it, it covers every humanity. It's one of the basic ritual, rituals in the entire world. There is no religion that does not have it. No religion that, that does not have it. They all have it for a specific God introduced it to humanity because that's the vehicle which brings in responsible citizens, responsible children, responsible adults. Hebrews 13.4 reads, Marriage is honorable in all. You see, marriage is what God intended us to be. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed and defiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's a fact. That is truth. And no one is es escaping that fact, including myself. So we are rather today we, we want to have this discussion folks to together of how we can restore the dignity in everything. So we are not we are not a large marriage group, but we do try to work with people who are a little disillusioned and seriously hurt by the gradual deterioration of the religious elements in, in matrimony. Actually People have come to me time and time again and said that, frankly, they did not want a judicial marriage because the so-called judicial marriage is what has brought us here because it has no rights which govern a person to be responsible in a marriage and in the raising of children. So many people have come to me time and again and said, frankly, that they did not want a, a, a judicial marriage they did not want to be married by the judge, no justice of peace. So they wanted a marriage that would inspire some form of internal commitment to mutual assistance and regard for a period of a lifetime. And that is what we are offering, that marriage, not a marriage for the judge, that marriage that inspires some form of internal commitment to mutual assistance and regard for a long time period of time, for a period of, of a lifetime. So what seems to be happening today is that those deciding to live together are trying in every way possible to avoid commitment. So that's how this is, has brought us to where we are at. People coming together, avoiding commitment. That's why they would rather go to be married by a judge, by the law. They avoid the responsibility of settling together into a serious matter of living together. Because that's what marriage is about. It's a serious matter of settling together and living together. Folks, these words are very relevant today because of what we have produced as children when we neglected such principles. 
Now, it isn't the ceremony alone. When I'm talking about marriage, I'm not talking about the ceremony alone, but it's, it is the living together. Because what keeps a marriage is for you to know that you, you are married and you must live together, settling together, serious in a, into a serious matter of a living together. So it's, it's not just a ceremony alone. It's the living together that constitutes the sacredness of the marriage ceremony. Sacredness is in the fact that you live together. You weigh every problem together. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 9 reads, Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of life. It's living together every day of your life. Ecclesiastes 9 9, Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the earth, all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and, the, and thy labor which thou takest under the sun. It's your portion to live joyfully with your wife, whom you love for all your life, all the days of your life. That's the portion God has given us. And in this day, folks, family, we see more and more the values of responsibility disintegrated or left behind in a mad mash of what we call now the fan generation. What we have is a fan generation. I, I, I can stay without a man. I can stay with, with, without a woman. What you're saying is that you can stay without a family, but God, or, or you can stay with, without marriage. Because God, marriage is what God intended us to be. So now because of the fan, fan generation, we've wasted our our heritage, hence, remember the Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, so shall we reap. So the fan generation has ripped, has, is, is partly to blame of such. We don't have elderly people in the, in the family who, who, who take over, who, who give over the torch to the next generation when they die. The cultures, the values. Fan does not inspire a person to better living or better thinking. Fan generation will never give you a better living or a better thinking. Fan generation is, it will just kill you, destroy you. I'll do what I want to do. If I want, I can just leave a marriage and go and marry another one. So now, now how does the fan gen generation get into this picture of what I'm trying to say? I think it happens when we go back to the day when the first atomic bombs were dropped. Because I'm speaking to the world. I'll give you examples. World the examples of the worldly magnitude. How do I bring in the fan generation? <clears throat> I think it happens when we go back to the day when the first atomic bomb was dropped at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So when that day happened, there was a lot of fear in mind and awakening and a realization, a realization of, of something which brought about the fan generation. Then the atomic bomb has destroyed the continuity of human purpose. When the atomic bomb was dropped in Hiroshima, people understood that life can be broken in, in a second. So it destroyed the atomic it destroyed the continuity of human purpose. It's it's committed a, a terrible crime crime. The atomic bomb saga committed a terrible crime against the survival of the human family. Human in human began to understand that they can easily annihilate themselves in total. So they didn't want to take life seriously. After all, life is not is, uh, unpredictable. I'll just have fun and live the way I want to go live. It brought a life that is lived under a constant danger of annihilation. So with the loss of securities, the end of a period in which people could plan lives, could work together with their certain vision or purpose, with all these gradually undermined, we have also a serious financial situation, namely the problem of competitive nuclear armament. After Hiroshima, everyone now wanted to build a bomb, wanted to be powerful. F countries, that families, countries, societies, communities that lived together in harmony for thousands of, of years began now to compete or now to build guns and, uh, and now to kill each other eroding the purpose of life. But what we bring to you as a household, 
is the restoration of the human dignity, restoration of mankind. So the whole world is spending most of the money that it needs to feed the hungry, to pro to the, the money they need to feed the hungry, they are using it to produce the weapons. They are using it to, to produce the weapons. Someone is telling me that they have no audio. Can somebody who is online please um, confirm if there's no audio so that we fix it? Or we'll try, baby. Uh, no, we are able to hear you, sir. Oh, you have. No, I mean on Facebook. Facebook uh, viewers, can you hear me? I, is my audio okay? Please, someone just uh, tell me uh, in the comments. I think Brother Kunda has used uh, uh, Zoom. He has joined the Svar Zoom. Okay, yeah, yeah, but there's somebody who wrote that there's no audio. Is it on Facebook or on Zoom? They have texted in the in the in the WhatsApp group. I hope I'm not. No, okay, that's not. Him. Get back. Sorry. Yeah. Let's find out so that we know. Anyone on Facebook, please. Those who are watching us, please just. If you can hear my voice, just text in the comments that you can hear me. Am I audible? Am I audible enough, folks, before we move on? Can you hear me? Someone listening to us on Facebook, is the audio okay? Am I audible enough? Because someone just uh, texted me that there's no audio. Before I continue this lovely topic, please, someone just uh, type for me. All right, thank you very much. Mamulumbuka says that they can hear me. So I was talking about, uh, let's continue then. We are talking about uh, this uh, generation and what it, uh, it has done to us. So, because of the, the, the problem of the nuclear competi com competitive nuclear armament, the whole world is spending most of the money that needs to feed the hungry to produce the weapons of mutual destruction. Why our, yeah, so you wonder now why, why do neighbors have to live together or side by side for hundreds of years and then go into nuclear armament co competition? which destroys every other stability of these countries. So there seems to be a problem. These, seem, these are, are the problems we are facing now because we neglect the values of living together as a community of a family. So there seems to be no reasonable answer to this problem. It's a result of a gradual shift of the human mind away from the basic reasons of living. You cannot shift from the best reason, uh, basic reasons of, of living, which were endowed with by nature, by truth, by God, and expect to, to be comfortable on earth. This is what is killing us. So we go to the Chinese, give examples of, of ourselves. Remember, we are four types of people on this earth. We have seen how all of us have progressed. So if we pick on the Chinese for a moment, because in the old days they were rather thoughtful. They began as thoughtful people, family people, traditional people. And we find a very simple fact, namely that the family was a psycho, biological cell in the great human race. Every family is a unit of life. That's where life begins. Every, that's why God has showed us, even nature itself will show you that marriage Family is what's important because every family is a unit of life. Every family is part of a structure as blood cells are part of the human body. So every family, your neighbor, your uncle, your cousin, your friend, they are just as part of the structure as blood cells are part of the, the human body to the human family. We cannot live without family, cannot live without marriage. That's why I was telling the young men last Sunday that when you... If you, when you want to date a girl or you want to date a boy, you don't ask them if they love you first. Ask them if they love marriage first. When, if they say they love marriage, then you're in luck. 
because the idea is to build family because family is a unity of life every family is part of a structure as blood cell <coughs> as blood cells are part of the human body so each family has a part to play not only in the perpetuation of the human family but in the social conditions of generations after generations of human beings so it's not just you having children you are responsible as a family to create a stable social environment through what you are teaching your children because they are going to join the environment they're going to be good citizens they're going to be uh, are saving humanity in a good way so i'll say that again each family has a part each family has a part to play not only in the perpetuation of the human family but in the social conditions of generations after generations of human beings so this very important factor is now being completely ignored the problem is that we are ignoring that because we are we are living here in, in what you call fan generation and let's see where it takes you genesis 2 24 these are very good words folks that's why i say share this with your friends let's talk about this we, we were talking about the prevailing conditions and now that we neglected family that's why we have children who are hateful and children who are dangerous generations 2 verse 24 reads therefore shall a man live because god intended for marriage genesis 2 24 therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh the problem the problem of reproduction because god wants family now because the fun generation brings in the fact that i can be married or i can have a child these days in our society around the globe you see young women having children from married men having children from outside marriage not that i'm trying to 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 disrespect people but like, like i said these messages are, are intended for me also i'm seeking the absolute truth these things when we do that you and me they pro they, they they distort the strength of a family so the problem of reproduction outside marriage is one that offers a very serious problem of ethics you've seen how this has been happening because then that child won't be guided that person won't produce properly to, to society it dissolves the responsibility factor and removes from human activity the blessings of the divine principle everything god has put together is a divine principle and they come with a blessing a life lived without spiritual overtone family you must live like that your life must have a spiritual overtone a life lived without spiritual overtone or the consolation of the spiritual conviction is almost useless we have discovered this for six thousand years living on earth as human beings civilized human beings so a life without spiritual overtone or the consolation of spiritual conviction is almost useless we are here to learn something and when we set ourselves firmly against learning i'm teaching you this and you set yourself firmly against learning and decide to live only for the moment to do what we please then the entire reason for this cycle of embodiment is lost the entire reason that you are you, you are embodied you are given this body to live on earth is lost because we are here entirely we are here we 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 are here to learn something and when we set ourselves firmly against this if you if you if 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 we fight the learning uh, principle which is what was put in us by god we set ourselves firmly against learning and decide to live only for the moment fun generation to do what we please then the entire reason for this cycle of embodiment is lost humanity a new way of life is coming folks and that's why you hear voices like mine because a new way of life is coming man is not going to be complacent and uh, negligible and careless and stupid and uh, and and lost there is a crop of people god as is introducing the son of man to guide us introducing households to guide us into the next chapter there is a new way of life coming we can start this reformation inside of ourselves we can begin as ourselves today i'm 
I'm, uh, I keep referring to the Chinese because this is a, this, these topics are not meant for one, one religion. Or one, these are for the human family. That, that the Chinese were a very, were rather, the Chinese were very strong in their realization of tremendous importance of family. And most nations in the world have had strong family courts. Before this fund nation, we all had strong family courts. The United States of America was built on strong family courts. The moment family was wiped out, we have the fun generation, the hateful generation. We have got pain. We have, we have got in our country, in, in Zambia, young people abducting themselves because they, were, they are not coming from units of families which were built on the principles of, of, of truth. So these, the whole world had strong family courts. These courts were for the protection. We are, we are emphasizing on the family courts because they are for the protection of the young so that the new generation coming in and coming up would be endowed with the best values and integrities of the past. What they get from their, their families, from their fathers. It was assumed that the parental responsibility was to produce offsprings who would be decent people. The responsibility of the family, the mother and father, they are always elect and watching to produce offspring who would be decent people, who would be honorable people and contributed, contributing to the general advancement of society, not contributing to abducting people or doing strange things. Proverbs 18.22 the Bible is very clear. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor from the Lord. So responsibility of the family is now being seriously shaken because of what you are calling new life, fun generation. When you, hear, when you see a son of man like me, you think we, we, we are old-fashioned. See now how, how your new fashion world has brought pain to you. But we are urging you and, and bidding you to return to the principles. See, the responsibility of the, of the human family is, is being shaken. The responsibility of the adult to produce a new generation of young people is fading away. The adults are drinking with the young children. The adults are going to bed with the young children. The adults have no responsibility anymore because adults are responsible to bring in a new generation of young people. But that responsibility, responsibility of the adult to produce a new generation of young people is, is fading away. Each individual is for himself. That's the generation we are living in. And we wonder why there is pain and sickness and, and hell in our societies. People are recognizing only one purpose to their existence, their own personal pleasure. Every person thinks he's here in life to, to sustain or to fulfill his own personal pleasure. People are coming to me with problems that were not in the past. We see these problems in counseling. We see these people, problem people coming to us, to us with problems we never even encountered in the past. Everywhere we turn, we are being exploit, exploited by our own or other people. They are exploiting us. You see, we want to emphasize the preserving of nice things in life. That is what this household is about. We want to preserve nice things in life, the gentle things, the gentle things the kindly things, the unselfish, unthoughtful things, and not accept, we don't want to accept competition as an excuse for the disintegration of personal integrity. You cannot say, I lost my integrity because we were competing and I had to win. That's why we don't believe in competition. This material struggle we are doing has no meaning, but just leads to the grave, folks. And I'm not saying these words as words. All of you have been witnesses to the raping of the world and how all these things are just leading us to the grave. The material, material struggle we are doing has no meaning but just leading us to the grave. People are amassing material at, um, at the expense of other people. We've seen people become rich. They have all oh, led the most to the grave and feeling for fulfilling their own bellies. The people that make up good family and stronger, better people People that make up good families, folks, are stronger, better people. They are stronger, better people.
The family is a test of integrity. God introduced the family to test our integrity. The family is a test of integrity, test of honor. Can you come out having created a family that is going to be responsible, that's going to add to society? The family is a test of integrity. It's a test of honor. A family is a triangulation of energy. You see, from, you know, from God, the spiritual, from everything. Marriage is a seed factor by which a race is perpetuated. Our race is dying because there's no marriage. So if we, if we don't have proper marriages, our race is going to be wiped up of the earth. Because marriage is a seed factor by which a race is perpetuated. People of the past survived because they had, they had strong marriages. Strong marriages, good marriages, mean strong family ties. So some families are in desperate straits most of the times, and as these desperate straits close in, the tendency is naturally to break up the pattern and to run away from responsibility comes in, because they are, they are going through these small, small problems, the straits. This factor is now added to another factor, namely not to establish a family at all. That's what they'll tell you, because there's trouble in, in marriage. I can't find a proper man to marry me. People are not married material anymore. Also, people neglect marriage at all. A family, folks, becomes a danger and a hazard to independence. If you have no family, you, you cannot be independent. Family is very important. How do I mean if you have no family? Some people think without a family, they have got their own money, their own job, so they are independent. They call that independence. But, but I'm telling you today, a family becomes a danger and a hazard to independence. Because what is independence? So let me tell you something. No individual who is not self-sustaining and an honorable member of society is really free and independent. You need to be self-sustaining, all right, but you need to also to be a honorable member of society. So many people are simply in bondage and slavery of their own desires, appetite and ambition, selfishness, fan city, you see? Ambition, appetites of life. Remember the Bible tells us that appetite is dangerous. In fact, Solomon mentions this in the book of Proverbs 23, verse 2. He says, and put a knife to your throat if you are a man of appetite. Put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. It's better you are dead because appetite will kill you anyway. They are failing in the fulfillment of the purpose for which they were intended. The family is the beginning, folks. I'm talking about family today as a solution to the problem of the world. The four human race, white, black, red, yellow. The family is the beginning of a mature civilization. If we are going to go into, the, into a mature civilization, we must restore the integrity of marriage. The family is the beginning of a mature civilization. Where the family fails, society fails. We are speaking experience. Family started to fall in the 1960s, our society has fallen. We have to get the universal purpose of thinking back into you. This is a, a universal thinking I'm trying to put back in you. Where the family fails, society fails. This message is to the world. I hope this is making sense, folks. It's a short sermon today. I just wanted to have a few words with you so that you understand that we need this work to be done by us. So for a long time, we were suffering considerably from what was commonly called atheism. You know? We were suffering from that. Atheism was a source of rejection of a deity. That did not seem to be very honorable. People rejected deity because, of course, uh, religion did a bad job at, at presenting what is called God to us, what is deity to us. So we suffered considerably from what was commonly called atheism. Atheism was a source of rejection of a deity that did not seem to be very honorable. If you see atheists, they will be talking about how can your God be there when people are suffering? He says, but atheism was a punishment for the people's... Let me tell you this. Atheism was a punishment for the people's ways of trying to live in the universe, 
the rules of which they could not obey. When you could not obey the rules of the universe, God punished you with atheism, and atheism now brought fun, fun generation. But anyway, atheism became very fashionable. It took on a scientific covering until finally the, the whole part of the Western civilization was infiltrated by this unbelieving. If you go into the Western civilization, there is so much unbelieving. Because religion did a very poor job to, to present job to, to humanity. This idea, but we are here to tell you that we have got a, a case to give to the world, which when they inquire into it, they will realize that that's, that's the only way to catapult the human mind into the, ne the next generation. This idea and there is nothing but this life and nothing after. That's what they tell you. There, th there is nothing but this life and nothing after. And that therefore all we could do is have a grand time. Now. Just enjoy ourselves now. Let's forget about being serious. Forget about family. That sounded pretty good to young people who were growing at the time. But look what has happened to the grand time. After the 60s, atheism kicked in. People started talking about there's nothing but this life and nothing after. Just so you live now, forget about family, forget about everything. Sorry, our Zoom folks have been kicked out. Let me bring them back in. I hope you are enjoying this uh, household talk today. I thought I should bring it up, and I know it's very helpful. You can go on and play this video again and again so that you... You, you pick, I've put a lot of principles for you to ponder on. I've been talking about this ever since we started. So please, when you go home, listen to this uh, audio, I mean, I mean to this video again. And these videos are on YouTube here. You can find this video on YouTube later. To be, it will be there as a recorded video. Also on Facebook, we are there as a recorded video. And please, as I always say, when you go to YouTube, don't forget to, to subscribe and hit the like button. Because uh, when you subscribe, you will be receiving these videos as they happen automatically. So, say, welcome back. Our Recording Zoom in talk, progress. Our Zoom folks. We can now continue our lesson. So, I was saying that... Um, the idea that there, there is nothing but this life and nothing after. And that therefore all we could do is have a grand time. Now, that sounded pretty good to young people who were growing at the time. But look what has happened to the grand time. Look what is happening in the world now. Pain, children hating one another. People hating one another. The grand time is now a tremendous chaos. The whole world is a chaos, society-wise. Morally, it's chaos because of the so-called grand time you purported to bring. The grand time is just com compounding misery. The grand time is failing because nothing can be grand unless it's basically right. Nothing can ever be grand unless it's right. And what's right is that Man was created to live in marriage, in a family. Nothing grand unless it, it's basically right. Down inside ourselves, we are never atheists. Every human being, even the people in the Western world who are having the base of being atheists, in their blankets, in their bedsheets, down inside ourselves, we are never atheists. As Napoleon pointed out on one occasion, it says, it's easy enough to conquer a people, but you cannot rule them after they are conquered without the help of truth. And that truth was supposed to be in the form of religion, but religion failed us. Religion was supposed to be an inspiring factor. It gives us motive to think bigger than we are. So now we can have it in what we are introduced to you, which is truth, absolute truth. The family can be likened to the early truth mysteries. Nearly all marriages are declarations of life intent. 
When you are marrying, you are declaring life intent. So Malachi 2.14, God is saying something about what we have done as a fun, grand, peop, grand time people. Malachi 2.14 says, Yet you say, Wherefore? He says, How? Oh, Lord, what are you saying? What have we done? Where have we wronged you? God says, Because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, again, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. You see? I told you that marriage is, is not a contract. It's a covenant. And there's a difference between... A but now, what we see in the grand world, so-called grand generation, the, the fan generation, marriage, they, they might say a covenant by mouth, but what they're doing is a contract. In a contract, when, when two people enter in a contract, when one person is not happy, the contract can be nullified. But when you are in a covenant, the covenant is never nullified. But what we see is that families, marriages are being nullified. Meaning what we have are contracts. But the Bible says, and the wife of thy covenant. Covenant, the Jews would give an example when they had they the ceremony where they were entering into a covenant. You, you were asked to bring salt. You bring your, your own salt and, and, and the person who was entering into, into covenant with you brought their own salt. And the, and, the, and, the, and the elder was supposed to mix both your salts in one pack. And then they would ask you, all of you, to, to, to retrieve your salts from that pack. And obviously you could not retrieve it. So it is with a covenant. It's, it's unretrievable. It's unbreakable. So everywhere where a family has a marriage which is sanctified or solemnized by the clergy, that family has a different basis for the living than those who are simply willing to go to the justice of the peace or not go anywhere. You need to have the man of truth to sanctify and solemnize your union, not what we have in the fan city world. So they are not going anywhere. So these people have accepted a responsibility, those who are following truth. They accept the responsibility. Once we have uh, destroyed the faith family, once we destroy the faith of the young, it is hard to restore. When a child was never given faith, once, let me say that again, once we have destroyed the faith of our young, it is hard to restore. That's why you have unruly young people, generation, doing sick, sickening things. In fact, the spirit of a young man has to be nurtured right, because in whatever form, it is strong. Paul says, I write unto you young men, because you are strong. When a young man decides to, to take drugs, you can never stop them. It's difficult. So that's why I'm saying, let's guide our young into right directions. Because the children must have the right beginning. Once we have destroyed the faith of the young, it is hard to, to restore. The primary school of education, folks, you hear me good. That's why family is very important. The primary school of education is the home. It's not an institution somewhere for the children. The primary school of education is the home. The first school is at the mother's knee, figuratively speaking. Any education a child gets before they are 10 years is by far the best education and determines everything they will be in, in life. So folks, you understand these things from zero up to 10 years. The child has to learn on your knee, in the home. You have to guide them, give them principles, warn them of the dangers of the world. Because any education a child gets before they are 10, 10 years, is by far the best education and determine everything that they ever be in life. If you miss your child, beyond 10 years old. It will be difficult for you to restore them. So that's why we are emphasizing on families, united families, mother, father, having the same mind. So without truth, 
no nation can be governed. That's what the religion was supposed to be, religion of truth, not religion of division, Muslims, Christians, Hinduism, Shintoism, no. It was supposed to be one religion, and religion which is absolute truth. Because without that, no nation can be governed. You have noticed that we have been governing nations with different religions, and they have been ungovernable up to now. This is an eternal truth, family. Education is coming into a new way of life. When you are educated, it means you are coming into a new way of life. Well, that's what education is, coming into a new way of life. You cannot have integrity, you cannot have integrity unless you inspire it and reward it. Integrity comes when you inspire it yourself and reward, and reward it. So, when I'm performing a wedding right, when people invite me to perform a wedding ceremony, all I'm doing is performing a ceremony, folks. Invite me to do your, your, your wedding. All I'm doing is doing a ceremony. I cannot unite these two people together. This they must do on themselves. When I come to marry you, all I'm doing is just performing a ceremony. I cannot unite you two people. This you must do by yourselves, on yourselves. That's why we have a home. That's why the Bible says, therefore, a man shall leave. Man. And, and it says, and the two shall become. You two will become. You two unite one another. They have to unite each other internally. The building a home because a spirit, they build a home because they know it's a spiritual investment. So, the unexperienced, emotion-dominated person, that's why when you're in marriage, you must be experienced. So, the unexperienced, emotion-dominated person with no understanding of the responsibility of life is in a poor position to make a good marriage. An individual is a spiritual being. When you say spirit, you understand folks, family. The way that I speak, they are spirit. An individual is supposed to have truth in their mind. The word that I speak are spirit. The absolute truth is what must govern a person. An individual is a spiritual being. The mere fact that we are here alive prove all things. We are alive because there is hope. That's why I preach every Sunday here on the platform from 9.30 to, to 11. Because I know as long as we are here, there is hope. Every perversion that we make is a resentment of God. You must know that. Every perversion we make is a resentment of God and we cut off the strength of the spiritual connection with God. That's why we are all in trouble as human beings. The inner life demands more than we give the outer life. You see? The inner life demands more than we give. The outer life does a lot of compromise and we get into trouble. The inner life demands more than we give. The outer life does a lot of compromise and we get into trouble. Paul says the outer man and the inner man are warring against themselves. The spiritual mind and the, human, and the material mind. We have a duty to grow and a duty to make sure the world around us grow. Our business is to grow and the world around us is growing with us because we are making it grow because of our ethics, because of how we live. So something must be done to teach the children before it goes to school. Before that child goes to school, you must teach it at home. Something must be done to teach a child before it goes to school. The school at the mother's knee. I'm using that as a figurative speech. That means that the father has no has no way of it. The mother's need is figurative, meaning at home. Because remember, a, a woman builds or destroys her own house. The woman is the anchor of the home. She shall be blessed by childbearing. Because the man is the head. So the school, so something must be done to teach the child before it goes to school. The, it has to be taught at the school, at the mother's knee. The school, which is at the mother's knee. So we do not need fun, folks. We do not need fun. We need to enjoy the glories of a good life. And the glories of a good life comes from family. It comes from family values. 
It doesn't come from fun, going to, to clubs, to red light districts over the, the weekend, going to sleep wherever you want to sleep with. So we don't need fun. It shows, and fun has brought us trouble. What we need is to, we need to enjoy the glories of a good life. And that only comes when we follow the ways of God, not the ways of life, of uh, humanity. Marriage is very important, and marriage is not emotions, it's a commitment, it's a choice. So f I didn't want to say a lot today, I just wanted to, to, to make this announcement, this small talk. If when you want, you can go back to it and listen to it, you will realize that it's deep. Come again next Sunday, 9.30. We have, we have got many things to, to, to talk to you about. Now, I think this is enough. I don't want to, to, to go into another topic. I wanted to restrict myself. My wife always tells me, please make it simple to the people. Because sometimes you might be so academic. So I'm, I'm sticking to these topics. So that when you go back, you can go back and go through this. So I will ask her. I'll ask my wife, my co-host, to summarize and say a few things before we depart from one another. Just a moment. Thank you very much, sir, for today's um, household talk. Uh, it's been very inspiring. Uh, personally, I think I during the week I had very deep thoughts that I actually shared with my husband about what's been going on. Uh, it, 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 it was very heavy. I think there was an incident in the nation last week that shook us, all of us. Uh, it shook us so much such that uh, you know, a few of my friends spoke about how that night they never slept because they didn't realize the gravity of what, how such a thing can happen under our nose right in this country. Yeah, and, and, and to make matters worse for us, it happened just under a kilometer from where we live. You know, so I think today's talk um, highlighted quite a lot on, on, on what, what exactly the question we were asking I had a conversation with someone I was asking, what exactly has gone wrong at fundamental level? So I think today's talk um, uh, has really been an eye-opener to be able to understand what this sort of deterioration has been and what needs to be done or what we need to go back to understand right at the grassroots. So thank you very much, sir. So maybe just to take us through uh, some pointers on on what today's talk was. Yeah, it's basically was focusing on restoration of the family, the dignity of marriage and family. And uh, I think some thoughts that he started with was just to ask us that this, the sacrament of, of, of marriage has been neglected. Um, Recording in progress. It's been neglected and so when you look at marriage itself as a sacrament, it's one of the basic rituals in the entire world that cuts across all societies, it cuts across race, it cuts across basically every setting in this world. It's the only form of union that leads to propagation of the human race. And so there's no religion that doesn't have it. I think that thought was quite important to, to know. and one would agree with that. So, um, and then we see that the Bible in Hebrews talks about marriage being honorable in all and the bed being undefiled. So that's how much God places an importance on this uh, sacrament called marriage. And so what it, it, it inspires internal, um, internal commitment and also uh, when we depart away from it, it's basically an avoidance of respons responsibilities because the, the actual sacrament of marriage in its truest sense uh, brings a settling together of people and living together in a unit called family. So 
Rev mentioned to us that it's not about the ceremony itself, but it's the living and cleaving and settling together that constitutes the sacrament um, of marriage. Then he also took us through to Ecclesiastes 9, where um, the writer there mentioned that live joyfully together with the wife of uh, whom, whom thou lovest all the days of your life. So it's something that God basically puts very importance to. And so looking at what's happening currently and the deterioration of our current generation, uh, he took us through something he defined as fun generation. That's what we have become. So because we have departed away from the actual sacredness, last Sunday he talked about the sacredness of family and marriage. So because we've departed away from the sacred, from holding sacred certain things, of which one of them is family and marriage, we have produced what is known as a fun generation. And so that fun generation has actually costed us. It has costed us, and so we are seeing that now we are in this competition to be, to be better than another person, to be cool. And what that has done is that it's threatening the hope that's there, that lies in the continuity of uh, the integrity of life. So um, these teachings, like he mentioned, is, the aim is to bring us back to that restoration of the human family, because there seems to be a basic problem. There seems to be a problem at fundamental level, at the foundation. And so there's a shift from the basic uh, reason of living. And then we see that in the ancient times, like he gave an example of the Chinese that were very traditional in their value system, that they began, they began their, um, basically their civilization was very traditional. They had this structured society where they valued family. And so he mentioned to us that every family is a unit of life and we cannot live without family because ideally we are all coming from there. So each family has a part to play in the stability, in the stable social gen uh, generation as well as in the stability of our environment. I think for me this was quite profound because this partly begins to answer or begins to place a bigger responsibility on us now because now we are seeing this fun generation. So meaning there's a bigger responsibility for us to go back to that realization that my home, my household, my family has a part to play in the bigger society in producing or perpetuating the integrity of the human family. If we are seeing what we are seeing now as children that are dysfunctional, young boys, that were able to do those atrocities, it means that something has gone wrong in the stability of the social generation or within our environment. Meaning the question that we need to ask ourselves is what exactly has each, what is the role of each family in ensuring that that deterioration doesn't happen? So if my family or my household departs away from that, I also have a part to play in the deterioration of the integrity of, uh, of our society. So, and also it took us to Genesis 2.24, where the Bible talks about how a man shall live, his father and mother and be united, and the two shall become one. So that is a unit of, of family. And so he also mentioned to us that um, uh, a life lived without a spiritual overtone is basically useless or a life lived without the consolation of the spiritual firmness. Meaning that within the same unit of family, uh, it's important that the spiritual overtone or spirituality or living within the principles of the truth are what should govern our families. Because we know that whatever product of that is going to raise a more a functional society, functional children that will eventually become good citizens, functional adults, and responsible uh, citizens. So he also admonished that, that we can start the reformation because now we've seen there's a deterioration, so there has to be a reformation, there has to be forming again those values we've lost. That can start within ourselves. Okay, And so I understood it that this will have to start within even our families, within each of our homes. And we need to also realize that um, the family code, which 
uh, I think he likened it to how the Chinese had strong family codes. That code is for the protection of the family. Yeah, and, and it was assumed that the responsibility of the family <coughs> basically is to produce offspring, but it's not just that. It goes beyond that, is to produce decent, honorable offspring that will contribute to a responsible um, society. So it's not just about us producing offspring and they go out there, but what's sort of, what is the quality of that offspring? That's the question I asked myself when he talked about that. And so, um, so we also see that uh, this fan generation, it took us back to the concept of the fan generation, this fan generation has threatened family. So this has threatened family, and so we are being urged to return to the values, the moral systems, the integrity that initially defined what true family is and what God intends family to be. Um, and then also um, he talked about how um, it, every person thinks in, in relation to the same fan generation, every person thinks that they, they are all here just to fulfill their pleasure. And so hence we are seeing all these very strange problems, we, very strange you know, desires, selfishness, and how we are all about amassing material at the expense of another life. Okay? But when we go back to the true unit of family, the family code, we realize that the family is a test of integrity. He mentioned to us that it's a test of integrity and honor. Okay, and so we need to be able to create a family that will add um, to society. And marriage becomes that seed factor by which uh, that can be done. And so strong marriages will mean strong family ties. So weak marriages, again, will mean the opposite. So everything starts at that uh, level. So he also mentioned to us in relation to strong families is that the family is the beginning of a mature civilization. Where a family fails, even the society fails. And I think that's what we are seeing now. When we are seeing all these strange happenings, the, the truth of the matter, you and I, that he was speaking to us today, we have actually failed at family level. And we need to accept that so that we can begin to make a change instead of us putting blame games on, 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 on each other. So he also mentioned to us that let's get the universal thinking back into society. I think I remember growing up, there was a saying that it takes a whole village to raise a child. This, that thought came when he, when he talked about that. If you remember, we all, growing up, another person's parent looked out for you. If you are not yet home, it's late, they will actually chase you to go home. They looked out for you. So if we can get back that sense of wound within our society, where someone's child is my child, if I see a wrong I'm able to correct it and see that child as my own, despite the fact that they are for another person or for my neighbor. Yeah, and I think growing up also in places like Copper Belt, I remember we practically knew each other's, each other's neighbors. You knew what was happening. But maybe now, because of the so-called fan generation, it's about, oh, me, myself, and I. And so if you have to find out what's happening with your neighbor, you're being nosy, but I guess it has costed us. Yeah. So then he also brought up the concept of atheism that for a long time we have suffered from atheism because religion did a bad job in presenting deity to us and they presented God in different forms and so this is atheism is basically is a punishment to the breakage of of the law. And so um he also took us to the idea that um uh, that atheism brought about the thought that there is nothing beyond this life, so we can just live uh, anyhow. The grand living should produce a grand time. Now, this has costed us again. It has brought a lot of pain. And so this grand time now is what has caused chaos. There is chaos within. We are seeing chaos in our society. We are seeing chaos in the world. We are seeing chaos in basically everywhere. The Western civilization, we are seeing a lot of that deterioration in, in, in moral systems. And so he brought us to a thought that nothing can ever be grand unless it's it's right. So every human being is never truly an, an atheist. In the deep of 
uh, your introspection, you realize that you are not truly an eth an atheist because you you get to question quite a lot of things. Yeah. So then he also um, brought to us Malachi two fourteen, um, which talks about uh, the seed and the wife of thy covenant and. He admonished us that marriage is a covenant, it's not a contract, because a contract can be broken, but marriage is a covenant, and God intended for it to be that way. So once we destroy the faith of our young, he also brought us the point that once we destroy the seed, that was... So once we destroy the faith of our young, uh, our children, it's very hard to restore. and it session he brought up an, a point about the spirit of the young man the spirit of the young has to be natured right uh, has to be natured right because in whichever form it's strong and he brought a thought on how we we see that if you look at the young people in whichever form they are whether they deteriorated disintegrated they are strong whether they are right they are strong and this was verified when Paul said, "They write to you, young men, because you are strong." So, uh, Rev also reminded us that the primary school of education is the home. For me, as a mother, I think I really um, that was very uh, um, catching for me because I realized that my role that I have to play in being able to produce this primary education in these young people is very cardinal. Because these are the people that Paul is referring to as being young men who, who are strong, if in whichever form they are, they are strong. Meaning even if we produce dysfunction of them, they will again be strongly dysfunctional. You know? So he mentioned to us that the first school is at the mother's knee, which is figuratively in the home. It determines everything that will happen thereafter. And it's very critical because the first 10 years of a child's life are critical. What happens thereafter will determine the value systems they will carry forward. Yeah. And so we also see that he mentioned to us that integrity comes when you inspire it and you reward it. And so in, in ending the, um, the talk, he reminded us that we, when you look at marriage itself, which produces family, it's not about a ceremony, but it's about bringing two people. And these two people must be, must this bringing, these two people must be must bring themselves together. They should become one. So they will have to unite each other uh, internally. And then the building of a home, he mentioned to us in ending the session that the building of a home is a spiritual experience. So an and that's because an individual is a spiritual being and hence must be governed by the absolute truth. So as long as we are alive, we know that there is hope. Yeah, and he also mentioned to us that every perversion we see is a resentment of God. And also there was something that's very deep that I caught. He said the inner life demands more, more than we give. So maybe what's happening now, we have neglected our inner life. We have probably neglected being able to feed our inner life. And one way we are feeding our inner life is actually by listening to these talks. And so um, he ended by saying something must be done to teach a child before he or she goes to school, that is out there, before he or she goes out there to go and be learned by the, the worldly system. You and I have a bigger role to play in teaching that child before they actually step out. And especially as women, he mentioned that the woman is the anchor of the home, and the Bible says she shall be saved by childbearing. So she has a bigger role in actually nurturing this child and even keeping the home together. Thank you very much, sir. All right, I think we are done. Thank you very much. That was a very good summation of what we are saying today. This is, uh, please, folks, take these words to be very serious and just listen to these videos um, every now and then, once, maybe twice, three times. Ponder about upon them. Start to apply them to your life. Uh, sh uh, share them with people you think of, are of your like mind and you, or people who are uh, family oriented. Share them even to people who don't know about family. Teach them about family. Please share this video because it's very relevant. 
we put it up with my wife because of what is transpiring throughout the world. It's a, it's a gift we're giving to you. Uh, and these words are verifiable in the way we live and they will help you produce a generation which is worth um, living on this earth, which, will be, which won't be hurt by the earth or destroyed. Thank you, folks. Meet us again next Sunday, 9.30, um, on the same Facebook. Bye.